This week, Russians will be voting to determine the country's next parliament. But there is little enthusiasm ahead of the December 4th Duma elections. Some Russians say they won't bother to turn out because they feel that the outcome has already been determined, much like the presidential elections in three months, in which Vladimir Putin faces little opposition and is expected to win. Karen Percy reports from Moscow. The 10,000-strong crowd at Sunday's United Russia Party Congress were eager to please the Prime Minister and presumed soon-to-be President Vladimir Putin. Delegate after delegate praised the man who has led this country in one way or another since 1999. In fact, the party revealed his candidacy at an event just like this one two months ago. Now it's official. The presidential vote is three months away, and no opposition candidate is expected to come anywhere near Putin. The more pressing concern for Putin and his party is this weekend's parliamentary elections, because United Russia has been losing support in recent months. Putin used the party congress to lean on voters. I count on every serious, clever, progressive thinking and responsible person who wishes the best for themselves and their country to support us during the Duma elections on December 4th, which will be led by Dmitry Medvedev. Along Moscow's traffic-choked streets, it's sometimes hard to tell that there's an election underway. There's the occasional billboard prompting Russians to vote. The posters bear a striking resemblance to the billboards being used by the United Russia Party, using the same colours, the same image. The only change is the ruling party's logo. It's a less than subtle reminder of just how stage managed Russia's democracy is. In one word, absent. I would say, you know, if, if you talked about democracy um, as institutions, oh, it's completely absent here. Russian born Arkady Ovstrovsky heads the Moscow Bureau of the Economist news magazine. He will be watching to see how far the authorities go to rig the outcome of the vote. You don't register parties, you don't want to come up, you uh, don't allow those parties to unite into blocks, you don't allow uh, single mandate uh, candidates to run. So there are a lot of things you, they already have done. Officially, there are six registered opposition parties in Russia. But in reality, many of the smaller parties have been co-opted by the ruling party. The Yablaka party was founded in 1993 and espouses a pro-market and pro-Europe outlook. The party's deputy chairperson is Sergei Mitrokin. Of course there is no democracy in Russia. It's a soft totalitarian regime, just an imitation of democracy to look good in the eyes of the West. In the 2007 parliamentary elections, Yablaka received less than 2% of the vote and has had no deputies in the Duma or the parliament since then. The party is hopeful that this time it will garner 7% of the vote, which will give it official status within the parliament. A lot will depend on whether voters bother to attend the polling stations. Again, Sergei Mitrokin. It's very indicative of any authoritarian state where the citizens are in political apathy. When citizens are active and demand changes, It's a very unpleasant situation for the ruling elite. Russia's parliament is dominated by the United Russia Party, dubbed the party of crooks and thieves by opponents. The institution has little credibility in the eyes of ordinary Russians who see the 450 Duma deputies as largely looking out for their own financial interests and who act as a rubber stamp for their benefactor Vladimir Putin. Again, the Yablaka party's Sergei Mitrokin. 
объяснять. Это для страны, по-моему... It's very dangerous for the country because the ruling elite is not interested in real changes and reforms. The country is immersing into stagnation and crisis. Since Vladimir Putin took over from Boris Yeltsin in 1999, democracy has slowly been eroding in Russia. Prime Minister Putin now appoints city mayors and provincial governors rather than allowing the people to elect local leaders. His government controls the broadcast media, the courts, the police and the Electoral Commission, and corruption has increased many-fold. The economist Arkady Ovstrovsky. Not a single institution really works in Russia apart from corruption because corruption has now become the glue. Corruption has become the system itself, not some um, not an illness, not a corrosion that can be taken away, but the actual system that's itself. That system is taking a toll on citizens who worry constantly about rising health and education costs, a lack of jobs and Russia's diminished role on the world stage. Arkady Ovstrovsky says the government relies too heavily on revenues from resources like oil and gas, which it uses to bolster welfare and pension payments. Russia has become less competitive rather than more competitive. Uh, and the money is used to you know, bribe the electorate. Putin is expected to secure his position for another 12 years following next year's presidential election. In response to criticisms of stagnation and cronyism, he's hinted at vague changes to the political system. We must have slow evolution to ensure stability. We must take a lot of care and responsibility to develop the system for the future generation. But many don't expect he will act on his word. Karen Percy, Free Speech Radio News, Moscow, Russia.